What up YouTube family, it's your boy Jonathan Evans. Listen, I'm excited about this one because we're talking about getting out of your feelings. Let's go. Get out your feelings. You've heard it been said before, when you're all in your feelings because it's all out of your reaction. The way that you're reacting, people know you're in your feelings. What you're doing is coming out of how you're feeling. How you're moving is coming out of our uh, feelings. Our feelings have a lot to do with what we do. And the question is, do they have too much control? Because a lot of times we end up in situations we don't want to be in. We end up operating in a way that we regret in the future. We end up saying something that we shouldn't have said. We end up going to places that we shouldn't have gone, meeting people and being with people that we shouldn't be with. All of these things that happen because we are all in our feelings. And a lot of times our feelings can disguise the truth. A lot of times our feelings can make something that's false look true to us because of how we feel and we'll operate on a false like it's the truth because uh, of how we feel and the feelings that we have towards what we want to do even if it's not what God wants us to do listen get out of your feelings feelings are important feelings is something that God gave us but feelings a lot of times can lead us in a direction that God doesn't have for us that's what the Bible says in Jeremiah 17 9 the heart is the most deceitful of all and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? So when we say in our culture, follow your heart, God is not saying follow your heart. That is an American slogan that the Bible disagrees with. God is not telling us to follow our heart. God is telling us to demand that our heart follow the truth. We got to put our heart and our feelings on a leash and tell it the direction that it's supposed to go based on the direction that God tells us to go. Now that's hard because your spirit and your flesh are always waging war with one another. When I say flesh, I'm talking about your feelings. I'm talking about your heart. I'm talking about your desire especially those desires that oppose God, oppose his word, oppose his will, oppose his way, and oppose his ultimate direction for your life, for my life, and the destiny and purpose that he has for our lives. And so listen, there are a lot of times in our life and in your life that you've been led by how you feel, you've been led by your desires, and it led you right into a trap that you struggled to get out of. It led you right into a situation that you ended up hating even though you thought you would love it because your feelings are deceitful. Your heart will deceive you. Your heart will often lead you into destruction but make it feel good on your way to your own destruction. So you gotta be careful because just because it feels good doesn't mean it is good. We've gotta be able to distinguish those two and be able to get out of our feelings and see it for what it really is and see it if it's really true. Galatians 5, 16 has a great verse about getting out of our feelings and it tells you how you can get out of your feelings. You can't get out of your feelings just, you know, by sitting there and saying, well, I don't want to feel, you're going to feel. Feelings are feelings and everybody feels. But you don't have to carry out what you feel. How do you deny something that's so strong? How do you deny something that is, it's so strong. I mean, people react on feelings. People uh, jump out in anger because they how they feel. Um, they rush into relationships because of how they feel. Um, they just are, uh, don't have self-control in spending, don't have self-control in talking, don't have self-control in acting because of how they feel. It's a very strong sensation that we have as human beings called feelings. And God says in Galatians 5, 16, walk by the spirit so that you do not carry out the desires of the flesh. What it does not say is walk by the spirit and you will not have desires of the flesh. That's not what it says. A lot of people spend their whole life trying to be less fleshy. If I just didn't have my feelings, I'd be okay. If I just didn't feel the way I feel, then I'd be good. If I didn't feel this way about you, I could get away from you. If I didn't feel this way about you, I wouldn't be so hard on you. You're gonna feel. The Bible doesn't say you're not gonna feel if you walk by the Spirit. 
It says if you walk by the spirit, even though you feel, you will have the power not to carry out what you feel. You will have something that's a fruit of the spirit that comes a few verses later called self-control. And why would you need self-control if there were never situations that are that came about where you didn't have to control yourself? Self-control intrinsically means that situations are going to happen where feelings are conjured up, where you have to see the truth, be patient and have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control so that you can experience what God wants you to have in your life and not just the outcomes of your feelings, even though they feel good and they're really false. Now, what is walking by the spirit? That seems like this never, never land concept. What do you mean walk by the spirit? It means walking spiritually. Well, what does walking spiritually mean? Well, walking spiritually means walking biblically. Because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he is the word, he is the truth. And then he left when he ascended and gave us the spirit. And the Bible says the spirit is here to comfort us, but also to lead us and guide us in all truth. So if the, the spirit's job, based on the book of John, to lead us and guide us in all truth, and the Bible says walk spiritually so that you won't carry out the flesh and you can get out of your feelings, it's saying let the word of God lead you and guide you in truth by the spirit that you have received. That you're relying on not the power of your feelings, you're relying on the power of your faith. You're relying on what is true, what is red, what is a staple, what will not change. Your feelings are like a roller coaster. They will go up and down. If you get in a fight with somebody, just go sit down for about 10 minutes or 10 hours or 10 days or 10 weeks and cool off and think about it, you'll probably feel a little bit differently or you'll feel a little bit worse or a little bit better. In other words, it's a roller coaster. But what's true is God's word. What's true is the fact that he's telling you how to walk. He's telling you how to live. He's telling you that a gentle word in Proverbs turns away wrath. So even though I'm feeling like giving a harsh word, the Bible says get a, give a gentle word. And if you give a gentle word, it'll turn away a harsh reality. So the Bible, through his word, tells you how to speak. It tells you how to operate. It tells you how to relate. It tells you how to be married. It tells you what to do. And when you walk spiritually, biblically, in spite of how I feel, you get true results and you don't get stuck with a false reality that came from good feelings. That came from, well, I think I'm doing it the right way. I feel like I'm doing it the right way. Now listen, how do you win? How do you actually win? When you got things happening in your life, you're frustrated to the max, you're angry to the max, you're in love to the max, there are all of these different feelings up or down, and you're trying to figure out how to deny the flesh to make sure that you're living the way God wants you to live so you can have the results that God wants you to have. When it comes to the spirit and the flesh, whichever one you feed wins. Very simple. If I put two wolves in a ring, let's say these wolves are at war with one another because the Bible says the spirit and the flesh are at war with one another. Well, if you feed the wolf that is the flesh, then that wolf will get stronger. That wolf will be more explosive. That wolf will have more energy. And if the spirit wolf is getting no food, no time, no training, no nothing, and comes into that battle with the feelings, with the flesh, and it's bony, it's tired, no energy, it has nothing to give in this fight, then what do you think is going to happen? It's not that the spirit of God is weak. It's just that that seed is not developing. Receive the word implanted, the Bible says, which is able to save your soul. It's able to save your soul, but ability in it actually happening is two different things because it's in seed form. 
But if you're feeding the spirit, you're feeding yourself with word, you're feeding yourself with community, you're feeling you're feeding yourself with truth and you're feeding that wolf and it comes to the war against the flesh and the flesh has been dehydrated. The flesh has has gotten nothing. The flesh has not been given the music and given the time and given the club and given the the the, the energy and given the friends and given the negative conversation and given the all of that stuff. And it comes to the fight anemic. It comes to the fight bony with no explosion. You will be able to carry out truth. Not because you don't feel. It's just that what you feel doesn't have more power over what is real. And when you understand that whatever you feed wins, if you want to win, then you'll know what to feed. Listen, if you don't want to, if you want to get out of your feelings, get into your faith. If you want to get out of your feelings, get into your faith because faith will carry you much further than your feelings. You're going to have the desires, but they don't have to have you. Listen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. Listen, you know someone needs to hear this. I'm glad that you're listening to this. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, get the notifications, share this video with everybody you know that needs it so that you and I can continue to grow together. Until next time, let's grow.